Hi there. I just read that Homeland Security will uh, start uh, policing uh, Facebook. It's just hilarious how how obvious uh, the, the the encroachment on privacy is and how useless it all is. You know, how many people are you going to keep busy policing uh, Facebook pages? How many criminals are there actually? You know, most criminals are already in jail, and then of course they're arresting people that uh, take uh, inflatable dolls to school or or try to steal a nude picture of Scarlett Johansson. Those are immediately arrested and put into the labor camps because that's what jails are these days. Uh, Homeland Security, I, I heard that the NYPD is also very ambitious. It's also a private security firm that is trying to, uh, let's say, spread its wings across the world and be in major cities around the globe. And to do that, it gets big money from the banks. Uh, so uh, th these banks simply have their private security. There was a, an article in the newspaper in Holland today that uh, a big cleaning company was not going to be taken over by a security firm, a Danish cleaning company uh, that was cleaning offices around the world and stuff like that. <coughs> hmm. Does that uh, seem uh, like a very good uh, thing not to do? Because uh, before you have, before you know it, you have security firms cleaning your office, which of course is an excellent way to spy on whatever you are doing know exactly what you what goes on and of course uh, you know uh, put all kinds of devices there there's industrial uh, industrial sp espionage it's not it's not a fantasy it's of course real and uh, and everything goes in the corporate world i believe it's uh, it's all about uh, the, the people go about over dead bodies in order to achieve their their gain <coughs> you know that all has to stop because it's all not cost effective the, the big problem these days is that People are trying to steal the food out of each other's mouth. Companies are trying to do that because there's simply not enough ar around. There was uh, actually there was a, a guy, or I think it was Gil, the actuary, that uh, expresses it right. That it's the oil shortage. It's a shortage of resources that is driving changes at the moment, and it can only go uh, worse because nobody is focusing on the solution. You know, if you know that you're wholly dependent on energy, then generating energy. Uh, should be of course free for everybody to do to undertake and should be wholly supported it should not be uh, happening in some kind of uh, organizational grid where power structure says well now I you know you have to use my copper in the ground that I put there 20 years ago and paid off uh, so now you have to pay every year uh, blah 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 that's only because that money is eventually used to channel a fossil fuel somewhere to let's say the, the scarce resources are managed with that money so money is basically always representing the old uh, the old way of doing things the new way of doing things is becoming independent is basically decoupling and just having your own energy and, and that should be free it should be completely unlimited in the world <coughs> and un un unless it is you're being occupied you're actually being uh, kept in the old system, in the fossil fuel resource system, and then you're basically uh, uh, condemned to, uh, to suffer from that. Anyway, I'll keep it short because I, uh, I live in a, a, uh, this is a kind of a hotel that I'm staying right now. But um, I, hope you, uh, I hope you watch the video that I link underneath this one, it's about ACTA, and uh, if you're in Europe you should uh, of course uh, try to uh, get some action going against it because it will mean that we will be uh, let's say policing each other every time and it's like <laughs> just <laughs> and always in the service of people that you don't know that you don't know where they are who they are why they're what they're doing you know the best thing uh, i thought about it a long time ago and that's basically if you outsource monitoring of surveillance cameras to the crowd then everybody becomes an accomplice and then you say, well, you're now you're a poor schmuck somewhere sitting behind a, a, a laptop watching this video feed. And if you detect a crime and you can prevent it, you get some money. And if you don't, then uh, then you're <laughs> then you just continue being a poor schmuck. You know, that's the way that's that's the way people can envision that. And then you have everybody uh, watching each other on, on the internet and and uh, and uh, ratting on each other. And it's a complete disaster. It's uh, it's one big suffering. And the only thing that stands in between that and a very prosperous and, and free world is that people are allowed to do some things like generating energy, owning property and, uh, and getting on with their own lives. But because of, let's say, the power of the dwindling resources, the fact that it is 
uh, well, it is a, a, a warm fire. You can warm yourself, you can hang out in Dubai and all those places, whatever they're building next without any use. You know, because you can party there uh, and, and, and get always, you can always get young people that never have experienced anything, that want to do that, that want to be part of that at the cost of everything. <coughs> you can always find those. So you always have your own army of young people uh, to, to help you uh, realize that uh, the dream that is destroying the planet. Um, so how do you stop it? Well, you, you take the army and you make sure that it stops. You know, there's, there's really uh, quite a uh, aversion I seem to sense in these days in, in having definite, definitive action. It's just not, <laughs> maybe that's the, the core of the, of the matter is, it's not economic to take a definitive action. You have to, if you have a problem, you can exploit it. People are, are, are distracted by it and you can motivate them to do things because of it. So if you solve the problem, you know, how are you going to find a new problem? That's then a problem, and uh, that's the way the world works. But it really, you know, <coughs> you have to wonder, you know, is that the way I want my world to work? I am the 99%. I stand on Wall Street. I protest. Nothing happens. Well, it's very unwise, I think, for Wall Street not to have responded to that to those protests until now. Not significantly in any way. We have a history of that in Holland. We used to have. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the Spanish o occupation here, and they would uh, leverage uh, VAT taxes, and they would. Uh, but our Dutch governors <coughs> arranged it so that the taxes would be levied over the whole country, and uh, so 10% over the whole country, and it would be kind of uh, well, just rounded off and would be handed to Spain. But Spain got greedy, and it said, "Well, you know, we really want to have every transaction from every city. We want to have that money, 10%." So you have to account it precisely, and this was this was in the like uh, I don't know long time ago, 1400 or something like that. And the Dutch they didn't want to do that. All these traders they said, "Well, fuck off, you know, it's my trade. I'm, I'm here. You're you're just a rent seeker from Spain. You don't do anything for us, you know. You sit, you come here around with your army, with your gold from the from South America, and and try to plunder us. But that's it." So uh, fuck off. But they were polite. So the first they went to the government, government, and asked it. So do something about this. We don't want to do this. We don't want to have all that hassle. It's just annoying. And uh, so, but they were said, okay, uh, go away. Uh, you know, we don't listen to you. But they were polite. They were called apologists, I believe. And then uh, they tried again. Some of them, one of them was already the brother of, of the founder of Holland, which is, uh, uh, of course, uh, William of Orange. He's called William the Silent because he didn't say anything during all these debates. So he didn't make himself vulnerable to any, uh, any uh, political attack. But uh, the, the, the guys that did, they went uh, to, to negotiate with the Spanish uh, uh, governor in Holland. And they, uh, according to the history, they were playing a, a, a game of cards and having dinner. And after dinner, they were beheaded. So that was all very amiable, but quite definitely final for these guys. And that was the point at which William the, the Silent, who was actually in Germany, I believe, and uh, I don't, I'm not, it's a long time I made a, ago I made a video about it, so I have to look it up. It's also on this channel, if I'm not mistaken. But he simply said, you know, you can now riot because I condone it. This is my territory. And <laughs> the Spanish. They kind of got confused. They didn't realize that Holland was Holland, was of the Dutch people, and that they were occupiers. So, uh, so the Eighty Year War started. It lasted eighty years. It was not a revolution really, and it uh, it stopped when Spanish uh, armies ran out of gold and they couldn't hire any mercenaries anymore. And that was the end of it. That's how Holland came about. <coughs> Start of Holland. VAT leveraging, we never liked it. We have 20, we have 19% now. So anyway, but that's completely irrelevant. Of course, the relevant part of this story is that you have a peaceful uh, request to do something about the situation by the people, and you have, and you might have another one, and then you might beat it down, and then you got a war in your hands. That's basically what what's it about. And that's actually very likely because the resources are dwindling, so people are getting hungry, and that's the point at which they will fight. 
for their lives or they will take whatever property is there to grow food on it or whatever it is whatever resources are available for them if it's really like that desperate then it's gonna be like that so you know do you want to have an america you can govern or do you want to have one big chaos i think the people that want to govern america are in the majority so uh i guess if there's any le lesson you can learn from the dutch revolution then it is that you should respond to early requests instead of ignoring it and i don't think uh, by the way uh, voting for ron paul will do the trick because he will be one and he might be the president but he might be an obama type president if the whole machinery around him is completely infested with uh, with the rent seekers and lazy people that that always bluff their way into everything and and never done anything useful for anybody and basically don't care about human lives of others it's all easy it's, it's all solvable the problem but you know somebody has to come in charge that solves it not a hitler or something like that not a not a right-wing lunatic because those always serve the industries like stalin or hitler or mussolini or whatever you can find but somebody with a brain that knows that there's let's say sunlight is a resource you can use it uh, energy is what you need because it's being depleted the resource is running out and with that you can build your society exactly the same as uh, as you have right now so push for that i think that's the big uh, message keep pushing and uh, and tell people that uh, there's <laughs> there's only examples in history where demands were made peacefully first and then something else happened